Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today I thought we'd talk about deformation order. Now we've had a series of tutorials recently going over a lot of the nonlinear deformers that come with Maya, such as bending and, and flaring and twisting and waves and so on. Uh, but And that's all well and good. But whenever you apply these things to an object, you kind of have to worry about the order in which you do so. And I'll show you what I mean right now. Let's go to Create and let's choose say a polygon cylinder so make a quick cylinder here I'll decrease the subdivisions caps to zero and I'll increase the subdivisions height up to something like 10 and let's just apply a couple of deformers to this so I'm going to go to my modeling menu set deform and we can choose any deformer really let's say nonlinear bend and again, I have a video going over the bend deformer already, but if you want to see how this works, but I can adjust this curvature and bend the object. So now I have the object selected. Let's apply another deformer. Let's go to deform and let's say a lattice. I'll change this down to three divisions in the T uh, area of the lattice. Choose lattice points. And I can kind of scale this up and change the shape of the object with the lattice. So this object has a bend deformer and a lattice deformer applied. We can add more deformers if we'd like. We can go to deform, nonlinear, and maybe let's do a flare. And we'll say, we'll do something like this. And like that. So, so this object has had quite a lot done to it three different deformers and the order of these deformers is important in how this works and how this functions so with the object selected and I have these deformers all applied up here in the UI you see this little box with an arrow going into it and these are the inputs of the object if I left click this you can see I have a list of all the deformers I've applied to the object so the nonlinears, the bend and flare as well as the FFD which is the lattice or freeform deformer and then down here if I click all inputs I get this list list of input operations for cylinder 1 and I have this, this list of things with these node states and filters and such so if I were to middle mouse click on one of these objects middle mouse click say on the flare for example click and drag with my middle mouse button I can reorder where in this list the deformer is and you see I just changed it so that the flare deformer came before the lattice and it changed the shape if I middle click the lattice or FFD and move it down below the flare we get back to the shape it was before it changes the order of deformation if I choose the lattice again middle mouse click and drag below the bend it changes again so you can see how the order of the deformation can have a big effect on the object again I can change the flare to go before the bend and we get this shape so the order in which these deformers apply matters so if, for example in this case the lattice is applied first then the flare and then the bend if the bend applies before the flare we get this result if the flare is before the lattice and the bend is after the lattice we get this result bend before the lattice we get this result so definitely lots of different changes that can happen to the shape based on the order of the deformation so this can be important if you're using multiple deformers and you have these kind of issues with your mesh and you're not sure why you might try changing the order of the deformations in this list of input operations for your object so let me show you another example of how this can be important when it comes to rigging so I'm going to delete all this I'm going to go to the sculpting tab of Maya's interface here in the uh, shelf and over here this orange box here if I click this it opens up the visor and Maya comes with several meshes that you can use just as uh, starting out with sculpting which we'll have videos going over sculpting uh, in the future I'm just going to choose one of these models let's say uh, we'll choose a character 
I'll just right click and say import so it imports the character into my scene I'll frame it in my view so we have this guy now like I said I didn't make this guy this guy came with Maya 2016 so I'm just going to apply a really quick and dirty skeleton to this guy so I'm going to go to my front view and I'll hide the grid for now I'll go to rigging menu set skeleton create joints and I'll just create a quick skeleton for this guy Okay, so I have this skeleton for this character, and it's a very basic skeleton, nothing too fancy. And so I'm going to select this, the mesh, shift select the skeleton, then I'll go to skin, bind skin. So I bound the skin, the mesh, to the skeleton. So now you can see I can select the joint and rotate it, and yeah, it's really ugly, but that's okay though. It's just for demonstration purposes. But the skeleton is affecting the object, it's deforming the mesh with the joints. So now let's say let's create a blend shape. So I'm going to select my mesh, I'm going to duplicate it. And because my mesh was rigged to the skeleton, all the attributes are locked over here. So my duplicates at channels are also locked. So if I select all these channels, right click and say unlock selected. And then I can move it over here to the side. So my original mesh, which is rigged to the skeleton, is still rigged, and my new mesh is not. But I'm going to just grab some vertices on the head here and just kind of do something crazy like this. Yeah. So now I'm going to select the modified object, shift select the original, deform, blend shape. And I can hide this guy with Control H. So now this mesh has a blend shape applied, as well as being rigged to a skeleton, which is very common to have that kind of setup. If I go to Windows, Animation Editors, Blend Shape, I have my Blend Shape slider here, and you see that as I adjust this slider, the shape of the original character will modify to match the shape of the new character I made, or the, the duplicate character, I should say. Like so. So with the blend shape down to zero, if I select this arm joint and rotate it, see it works just fine. And as I increase the blend shape, suddenly the arm pulls away from the skeleton and is no longer bound to the skeleton. That's an issue. I want the skeleton to still work, and I still want the blend shape to work too. This is an issue with deformation order. So I want the, the arm to stay raised, and I want this slider to go up and down without adjusting the arm's position, and for the head to still balloon out like this. So let's select our mesh, go right back to our input list, and you see here I have blend shape and skin cluster. Skin cluster is the rigging of the mesh, and blend shape is the blend shape, of course. Now if I minimize click on the blend shape and move it below the skin cluster, Nothing changes over here, but if I reopen my blend shape slider now, you'll see now the arm does not pull away as I adjust the blend shape slider. The skeleton is still taking effect as well as the blend shape because the blend shape now is being applied before the skeleton. So the blend shape gets applied and then the skeleton gets applied and so the skeleton maintains its uh, control over the mesh, like so, and the blend shape will still work. So that's just a quick view on how deformation order works and how it's important. I hope you learned a little bit about that topic and your own characters that you're making. I hope you'll keep that in mind if you have these issues with blend shapes as well as any other deformer and rigging. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.